from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Tuesday, September the 6th, 2022. Seven people were hurt in a terror attack Sunday in the Jordan Valley. The IDF said that armed terrorists fired at a bus, injuring six IDF soldiers and a civilian. IDF forces apprehended two individuals suspected of carrying out the attack. They are still searching for additional terrorists. The Times of Israel reports that the bus was carrying mostly unarmed troops to a training base when it was targeted in a drive-by shooting by three Palestinian suspects, all said to be family members, who got in front of the bus and opened fire at the windshield, seriously wounding the bus's driver, as well as six Israeli soldiers who suffered light to moderate injuries. The IDF was also cited saying that the suspects tried to pour flammable liquid on the bus. Soldiers who were armed on the bus returned fire towards the suspects and their vehicle caught fire. Two of the suspects were arrested as they abandoned their vehicle. A third fled and a manhunt is underway. Israeli Prime Minister Yair Lapid wished a speedy recovery to the wounded vowing we will continue and put our hands on anyone who tries to harm the citizens and soldiers of the state of Israel. The IDF yesterday concluded its investigations into the killing of veteran Al Jazeera journalist, Palestinian-American Shireen Abu Akleh in Jenin in the West Bank this past May, saying that while it was impossible to say for certain, Abu Akleh was most likely killed by accidental IDF fire. If you recall, the IDF went into Jenin to find terror suspects following a wave of deadly terror attacks against Israelis carried out by Palestinians from the area when they came under heavy indiscriminate fire from Palestinian terrorists and an intense gun battle ensued, during which Abu Akleh, who was reporting from the scene, was inadvertently shot and killed. The IDF said that after the series of investigations carried out by a dedicated team, it appears that it is not possible to determine unequivocally by whom Shireen Abu Akli was shot. But it is more likely that Shireen was accidentally hit by IDF fire, which was fired at those identified as Palestinian militants, stressing that the IDF soldiers' fire was aimed and intended to hit the terrorists who fired at our forces, adding there was still the possibility that Abu Akli was hit by Palestinian gunfire. U.S. State Department spokesperson Ned Price said we welcome Israel's review of this tragic incident and again underscored the importance of accountability in this case such as policies and procedures to prevent similar incidents from occurring in the future. Well, an official state ceremony took place in Munich, Germany yesterday, marking 50 years since the tragic murders of 11 Israeli athletes and coaches at the 1972 Olympic Games in the city carried out by Palestinian terror group Black September. At the start of the ceremony yesterday, Israel's President Isaac Herzog and Germany's President Frank Walter Steinmeier laid wreaths in memory of the victims of the massacre and spoke Steinmeier first of the tragedy. The German president apologizing for the failures on the part of Germany and addressing the families of the Munich 11 directly who were in attendance at the ceremony. He said, we cannot make up for what has happened not even for what you have experienced and suffered in terms of defensiveness, ignorance, and injustice. I am ashamed of that, Steinmeier said, as head of state of this country and in the name of the Federal Republic of Germany, I ask your forgiveness for the inadequate protection afforded to the Israeli athletes at the Olympic Games at Munich and the woeful investigation afterward that it was possible for what happened to happen. Herzog said the brutal and barbaric massacre was a momentous human tragedy in which the values of morality and justice were trampled. Human dignity was erased, all semblance of humanity lost. It was the moment, he said, the Olympic torch was snuffed. Herzog thanked Steinmeier for, he said, the decision to take responsibility for the failures surrounding and following the massacre. 
to allow for an objective and rigorous inquiry and to compensate the victims' families, which he said is part of that sanctification of the good and triumph over evil. It represents, half a century later, an important step of morality and justice for the victims, for the families, and for history itself. Today, Herzog addressed Germany's parliament, the Bundestag, in Hebrew, where he began with saying he would recite the Yiskor, remember prayer, putting on his kippah, which he said, I dedicate to the elevation of the souls of our brothers and sisters who were killed and massacred and murdered by the Nazis and their accomplices. Herzog went on to say, I stand here today, but I am not alone. I stand as an emissary, as the president of Israel and a proud son of the Jewish people. I stand here carrying hopes and dreams, pain and relief, memories of destruction and revival. Above all, he said, I stand with one imperative, remember. And later today, Herzog and Steinmeier visited the site of the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp, which Herzog's father, the sixth president of Israel, Chaim Herzog, helped liberate. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Tuesday, September the 6th at 7 o'clock, Rabbi Emil Hirsch talks about the notion of freedom. At 7.30, President of the Shalom Hartman Institute in Jerusalem, Daniel Hartman, talks about Zionism and power, that Israel gives the Jewish people the gift of power not as an instrument but as a value. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with Peter Weintraub on L'Chaim, and then it's a look at the history of Jews in politics. And coming up next, the ILTV's Insider. And that's the JBS News Update for Tuesday, September the 6th, 2022. I'm Tisha Bader. Stay healthy, stay well. <laughs>